it's a pleasure to be here with all of you this evening. Um, it's the evening of World Teachers Day um, and all educators, I believe. And it's lovely to be able to spend some time thinking about ourselves and thinking about how we can look after ourselves as educators so that we can then provide the best service, the best education to the children, to the adults, to the learners that, that we are here for. So I'm going to share my screen. It's really interesting because I, I received an email the other day and somebody put their name on um, phonetically. And I thought with a name like mine, I certainly need to do that as well. So I'll tell you, my name is Maria Wojciechowska Kanida. And um, I'm here today to help you celebrate World Teacher Day and using some creative and mindfulness practices. Now I've got a variety of different things, hopefully something for everybody that you'll find on here. I love showing this little picture of me when I introduce myself. This is me at eight years old. I don't know what I was doing really, <laughs> was watering the garden. My dad had given me um, the camera to take on a school outing and we wanted it in those days, you had to use up the film. So he said, go outside and just pose. And literally a few hours before I'd taken the family camera out on my first excursion, my first school trip. I think I was about seven or eight there. I think I must've been about eight. And so this photo always, I've always called this little me and it helps me introduce myself. So I'm a photographer, I'm a creative practitioner, I'm a primary educator. I've worked in education for 24 years um, as a class-based teacher, and now I'm doing something a little bit different. So I uh, run my own company called Arco Iris Learning, and it is Spanish for rainbow because um, I've got Spanish heritage. And I love rainbows because rainbows are a real symbol of hope. And I provide different services to, um, to educators, to different organizations, just to help with well-being and mindfulness through different creative means. Mine particularly is photography, but through, through any creative practice, which you'll see this evening. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about my second year anniversary. It's only two years that I've enjoyed a, a relationship, so to speak, with Autumn. Before two years ago, it was the lockdown, Autumn to me was the end of summer. It was the beginning of cold. It was the beginning of darkness and I did not enjoy it at all. In fact, I even put a countdown on my phone to when the clocks would go forward again. That's how much I, I had a disdain for autumn. But during the lockdown in, in Britain, it was really difficult to, to get out. And I thought, right, I need to be doing something that's supporting my own mental health and well-being. And I also home educate my niece she's 16 well, for the last two years on and off and we were doing something to do with autumn and I thought crikey it's not my favorite season but we started working on these badges and this with their permission they've given me permission to use their logos today it's a fabulous company and um, the children do this and so of course my niece did this and and she had to do three or four things and I thought well if she's going to get a badge I'm going to get a badge as well so all the things that we worked on together, I, I got myself a badge as well. And it was so fabulous the way that we were working together, this creative learning, that even for my own creative photography sessions that I do with children, I've ordered a badge from them. So now the children that I teach have got this wonderful badge that they get. And if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about how many badges we've create we've collected together, it's just fabulous. It's it's something that's very visual. It's something beautiful. And I know that that's that's what started me off thinking about autumn. It was my very first badge, and I I had to make certain things. So I thought, right, I'm going to embrace it. Let's see what this let's see what this season of autumn is all about. So looking into the season of autumn, it is a time to celebrate your growth, celebrate all the things that you've done this year, all the harvesting. I know that some um, academic years um, start in September, some starts at different times of the year, but it is literally thinking about how you personally have grown during this whole period of time, this year. And it's also about letting things go that you don't need anymore. A bit like the trees, the trees are very good at showing us how to let go of their leaves. Now we know that eventually that will then turn into winter, into spring, 
into summer and cyclically, cyclically, it's a difficult word to say, cyclically, it's okay to be in these seasons. I think for me personally, I was always focused towards summer and anything else was either pre-summer or post-summer or get it the opposite of summer. Whereas now I'm realizing that actually for me and my well-being, all the seasons have their own merit. So I'd like to start colleagues today um, asking you to think about um, your own harvest. Is there a time that you can celebrate over this for the World Educators, World Teachers Day? And if there's anything that you can celebrate and you can either just have that as a personal reflection yourself or you can make a comment in the chat. I wonder what harvest you can celebrate. I know that for me personally, I've been trying to get a website organized. I'm not a website designer. For years, I'd always say, oh, I wish I had a website so I could have all the content on there. And so that's something that I'm celebrating, my the fruition of a website, of working with the children and with adults that I've been working this year. So something to ponder on. What can you, I wonder what harvest you can celebrate. And also autumn is all about nature letting go and being thankful for what this year has brought. And I wonder what you could be ready to let go of. Sometimes it's quite a hard thing. I'm trying <clears throat> very hard to let go of fear. Just being in the moment that all will be well, even though sometimes it doesn't feel like that. What could you be ready to let go of? So either a, a personal pondering reflection for yourself. And this doesn't have to be done today. It can be something that you're thinking about. When I work with the children and the, um, the clients that I work with, I ask these wonder questions. They are there as a suggestion. I don't need to know the answer. It's really for you yourself to use that in your own well-being. So I thought we'd start this evening with a contemplative visualization. And if you haven't experienced this before, I'll give you a little bit of a background about it. So in a moment, I'm going to invite you to, should you wish to close your eyes, to make yourself comfortable, you can stay sitting, you can lie down, whatever you feel comfortable with, you can just listen to the visualization. And then I'm going to ask you to focus on your breathing just to help you get relaxed. And then I'll ask you to imagine a place and then I'll lead you through some visualization prompts just to help you support getting into this. And then I'll leave you a bit of time just to, just to relax and think about what I've said. And then you'll know that I finished because I'll say, it's time to finish our wanderings. And then I'll, I'll bring you out. So this is completely, this is an invitation should you wish to get involved. Find yourself a comfortable place to be. Close your eyes if you wish, and we'll get started. I'd like you to notice your breath going gently in and notice your breath gently out. Just notice the in breath and the out breath at your own pace. You may want to put your hands in your heart space or on your stomach or in another comfortable position. Just notice your breathing. Notice your breathing in and out at your own unique, beautiful pace. You may notice some thoughts of your day creeping in and that's fine. Just focus on your breath.
and I invite you to close your eyes if you'd like to. And I invite you to imagine a place that's outside where you feel safe. Imagine it's a beautiful place and a beautiful space. Imagine what you can see. Imagine what you can hear. You notice in your imagination that there are some trees. And you notice that the leaves are falling gently to the ground. You notice the colour of the leaves. Imagine you walk towards the leaves that have fall, fallen and you hold one in your hand to notice the colours of the leaf. The trees are letting go of their leaves. The leaves have helped the tree grow during the summer months and they have no need for them now. The nutrients from the leaves will go back into the soil. The trees will rest and release and recuperate. So you notice the leaf in your hand and the colors. I wonder what you notice about your leaf. I'm going to give you some time to spend in this imagined place. And you can sit in the stillness of your imagination or contemplate on the things that you've heard whatever you feel comfortable with. It's time to finish our wanderings. You can come back to this special place or another special place that you would like to imagine. Notice your breath going gently in and your breath leave gently out. Gently in and gently out. And when you're ready, and if your eyes have been closed, open your eyes and have a stretch. I'm going to ask you some prompts and these are personal prompts for yourself. If you'd like to share them, you can put them in the chat, but they're really, they're for you to ponder on. I wonder how you felt in your imagination. I wonder what colors you imagined. I wonder what you saw in your autumn place. Thank you. Thank you for taking part in that visualization. What I'd like to do now is to give you an opportunity to do some creative work yourself. And I'm going to demonstrate with another camera how to create an autumn swirl activity. And this activity is so brilliant because you can, you can use this for all the seasons. I've done a gratitude swirl before. I've done a, um, a word swirl where I thought about water. 
this is so versatile. You can you can use paints, you can use crayons, you can use pens, you can use anything that you have to hand. Um, I'm trying to find a way how to, I can make this with fabric. That would be my next challenge. So I'm going to demonstrate now how to create a, a an autumn swirl. Now I'm using some watercolor paper, but you can use any kind of paper. And what I suggest that you do is that if it's on a pad that you remove it, because what will happen is it'll be filled with water very soon. And then to rip it off, I've done that before. I found it really tricky, all the water dribbles off, but maybe that might be something that you like. So I'm going to show you, it's a very simple technique. I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm going to start in the middle and I'm just going to make a swirl with a pencil. Now, you may want to just watch this and then do this in the recording afterwards, or you may want to join in. It's totally up to you. This is your day as educators to celebrate yourself. I think I'm going to stop about here. And then what I'm going to use is I'm going to use some water. Now, I've been very careful trying not to use my tea. <laughs> Usually I, I, I dip my water my paintbrush into my tea so I separate that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my paintbrush into water and I'm just going to put a little bit of water in a section now it's up to you you might want to completely saturate it or just put a little bit but this technique if you're using paints if you're using something else that's okay but this technique is rather gorgeous because what I'm going to do now is drop some paint onto the water, just dab it on, and you can see that it's starting to go and follow the water. So I usually dab around the edges here, and then I just see how it swirls onto the water. And the reason I do section by section is so that it stays nice and wet. If I paint the whole of it, by the time I get to the end, it will have dried. And then I repeat the process. Let's add a bit of water here. And I might want to choose a different color. Now, can you see it's already starting to merge? And that's quite nice. So I might get some browns in there now. And just at the edges here, just, just dab it and see. Now, this isn't an activity that's very quick. It does take a little bit of time and it does take time to dry. Let me add a bit more water here. Now you might find that actually you might want to spread this color out a little bit. There's no wrong. It's just whatever the swirl will turn into. I've done this a few times this week and they all look different. Now, if you feel that you're not too happy about there's too much water there, you could always take a bit of tissue paper and suck up some of the water if you want to, or you could even dab it as well if you prefer the different techniques. It's completely up to you mine will look very different to yours and the next one you do will look very different again let's add some orange onto that i want to merge the colors a little bit i might put a little dab of orange there as well you might want to vary the amount of water that you put on oh that was nice I kind of drew the paint along just to see what it looks like. Or you might even just want to paint. You might just want to paint with the, water, with the watercolors and that's fine. Whatever you feel comfortable with, this is, this is yours. This is your creation. And don't worry if when you're going around, the colors are mixing because actually that will make it even more autumnal. Now I'm noticing that the water that I'm putting on is starting to look quite browny. So I might need to have another, which I do, another jar of water here, another clearer jar 
so that when I'm putting the water on, there we go, it's clearer, not absorbing so much. I wonder what a red would look like on there. I haven't done a red before, that might look quite nice. Some of the red's colours. Dab a few bit here. And like I said before, this isn't an activity that can be rushed. It's something to take time on. And as educators, we are constantly supporting our students, our learners, and filling their hearts, their minds, their souls with all the things that we're teaching them. And it's really important to be able to do that for ourselves. I know when I was full time in a classroom, I spent so much time doing for others and forgot about myself. But actually now I know how important it is to fill my own cup before I can fill others. I think I'm going to get some more browns in there with the water again. It'd be really interesting to see if anybody's doing this technique or, a, or another technique as well. Let's get some browns in there. I think I'd like to get a little bit more, more orangey brown. Let's see what that brown looks like there. Different browns. I mean, you could do all of that with different browns. I'm going to go into my, my other paint pot because I know I've got a particularly lovely colour, yellow okra. It's one of my favourite colours there. See if I blend that in here, what that looks like. And it may look a bit messy now, but actually once it dries, it will look fabulous. You'd be surprised how simple this technique is. And this technique can be used with all ranges. As you can see, it's very simple to do. Just painting along here, because what I want to do is I've noticed there's a little bit here, so I might just want to dab a little bit to dab too much because I quite like the, the water saturation with the paint. And are there any questions in the chat that anybody would like to ask while we're painting? Or are people just enjoying enjoying the moment? There's no questions so far. Okay, thank you, Anne. Um, what I usually like to do is when I'm creating these artworks, because I know I'm going to be drawing on them later uh, with pen, I'll make a few of these so I know that they'll dry all at the same time because now what you'll find is you'll have to be patient and wait for this to dry. And that's part of the, that's one of the hardest parts when you're creating something. Yeah, that's just a simple technique with watercolors. I'm gonna dab that a little bit now. And I know that that's going to take a little bit of time to dry, but you continue and enjoy doing your activity here. And I'm going to show you what the next step would be to create. So here's one I did few days ago so that's that's nice and dry so after you've done your painting after you've done your swirl then you'll be in a better position to um to go over your pencil mark and I've got a black pen here but actually now I'm thinking it would wonder what it would be like with a brown felt tip pen or a different color so I think after this session that's what I'm going to do I'm going to do some more so what I would just do is with the black, I would just go round. And actually, while I'm going around here, I'm just reminding myself about the cycles, the seasonal cycle that we're in autumn, which will then go to winter, which will then go to spring, which will then go to summer. And it's a continual cycle of growing. And actually, as this spiral you're seeing, it's going outwards. 
just like our lives we start off very small and go around and around until we're finished. So I'm going to move this paper a little bit around here just so I show you what I've done. Now, when I have created this autumn spiral, this was all about my celebrations. So I moved the paper as I was writing on it. So I started off by saying autumn is a time to celebrate our harvest for this year. You may not be able to see it too well. Maybe I'll put it up a little bit like that. And then I've written on there with the celebrations that pertain to me. So I did some successful sessions for children. I visited many schools. My, I received some personal confidence coaching from another person um, who supported the Steve Sinnott Foundation, Hema Patel. Absolutely fabulous. It's been in, pivotal to my own development. I've, I've had that. I've spoken at a few events in person as well as online. I've challenged my creativity, so I've really pushed the boat out, and I'll show you some of that later on. I've got a new website, which I said, and I've expanded my network. I've been braver and stronger and happier. So there might be something that you want to start writing on here. So all I'll write is autumn is a time to celebrate. In fact, I'm going to change that. Celebrate my harvest. this year and then I invite you all the way around to think about the things that you've done this year that you're particularly proud of that have strengthened you that have nourished you and once you have done that you may want to do one about letting go so I've done a similar one but this time, instead of starting with a circle, I started with a, a leaf in the middle and I painted it the same as we did earlier on. And then I just wrote what I'd like to let go of. Autumn is a time to let go of things which no longer serves me. Put here fear from public speaking, the opinion that I'm not good enough, thoughts that bring me down releasing the need to constantly prove myself to others, seeking approval, fear from failure, and withdrawing. That's a quite a lot of things I'm aiming to let go. I'll let you know how that goes. I, I, I put my intentions on the paper. But once you start doing something like this, you may be inspired to use some different shapes. Here is... Um, a leaf shape that I started instead of it was an outward spiral but I used a leaf shape or you might even want to draw around a leaf I mean the 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 possibility the this is endless you you can do absolutely anything that you want so I hope you've enjoyed taking a bit of time out to make your swirl and I'd be really interested I'm going to change my camera now and I'd be really interested if there's anybody who would like to share their progress or anything that they would like to um, to make a comment on before we move on. Is there anything in the chat, Anne, before I move on? Any questions or anybody would like to share? Um, yes, um, Julius has said it's quite interesting um yeah i can, see I can, I can share my swell if nobody else is willing to oh i think helen's got hers up as well oh that's gorgeous mine's a bit drippy that's nice well the drips might add to <laughs> add to the creativity and helen as well and helen's just... is beautiful yeah, really really lovely it'd be nice to have some of these photos if anybody's happy to share them with you or to post them on social media that would be wonderful thank you lovely thank you okay so i'm going to go back to my screen sharing and just give you um some more 
activities that you may want to do or to use with um, with your learners or even with yourself. Um, I run every day. It started off in January of this year. I, I have a journal and it's not a writing journal. And I'm, I'm very conscious that journals are very good for your well-being, but I found it really difficult to write something every day. I felt like I was just writing. I wasn't really being present with it. It was just an activity. So I started a, on Instagram, my Instagram account, um, just looking at some contemplations and I called it contemplative photography for a while. I called it contemplative seeing for a while. And now it's just contemplations. It's just it's just my thoughts and it's part of my daily morning practice. So if, even before I get out of bed, because I used to, first thing I used to do was scroll through social media, scroll through the news. And before I'd even get up, I'd not want to get up. <laughs> so this is an activity that I do for myself and I share in the hope that it might reach out to others. Sometimes they're questions, sometimes it's just noticings. And these are photos that I've I've taken over the years and they are hidden in my camera roll. And I wanted to bring them back to life. I wanted them to be a part of the world again. And so sometimes there are questions. And so for the this period of time, this season, I'm being very seasonal. I'm thinking very much about the colors and what's out there. And as prompts to um, my own ponderings, my wanderings during the day, I'm a, I am a contemplative person. I do do a lot of thinking and, and not overthinking, just, just ruminating, you know, in a positive way. And sometimes revisiting, <clears throat> excuse me, revisiting something. And now <clears throat> I'm going to just take a quick drink of water. <clears throat> and now I'd like to share with you um, a wordless poem. Now you may wonder what on earth this is. Now I have made it up. So don't worry too much if you don't know what a wordless poem is, but I do like to do a lot of writing, but I don't like a lot of people to read <laughs> my poems because they're quite personal. So what I thought I'd do was design a wordless poem that I knew what it meant, but nobody else, kn nobody else knew. And so what I did was I followed this structure. So I just made it up. It's, I like to do things in sevens, um, my photography has seven grades and you know, seven colors of the rainbow. And so I've got seven here and I do this for each of the seasons. So I've got one for spring and for autumn. I haven't got one for summer yet, but I've got one for spring. So I started last year. And what I did was I took each one of these um, sentences. And as I was, I'm gonna go back to the picture. As I was choosing one of the fabrics, I would be mindfully stitching, this is all by hand, stitching and saying those words, saying those words so that that circle actually becomes that verse, that, that line in the poem. So that's what I did. And this is my poem that I'm gonna share with you. Allow the autumn cycle to fill you. See a crown of colour singing you an autumnal lullaby. Notice a golden ring surrounding you with your harvest. See the orb of abundance in the transformation of nature. Notice the glow of your own accomplishment and see a bracelet of fallen leaves land at your feet. Allow the autumn cycle to fill you. So I took each one of those and I mindfully sewed them into the fabric. This one in particular is one of my favorite pieces of fabric. It has quite a big significance for me and I'm so glad I was able to reuse it because this frame, um, it's on a frame and when I show you my full screen, you'll be able to see it behind me. Um, it's repurposed wood that my dad um, made for me. He made me four. And the, the white sheet is an old bed sheet that we had. So uh, I'm very into sustainability and repurposing and reusing. But this fabric, the one that's got all the dots in it, it was um, a cushion cover that I bought when I bought my first flat 20 years ago. And 
it was so threadbare and I was so reluctant to throw away. And it's been in my fabric box for a very, very long time. And I was so pleased because I knew that I could reuse that. And I know that when I see it, I know that it's got memories to it, but also it had its day and it was time to let it go. I couldn't fix it. It was so threadbare. But it reminds me now when I look at it that it is time to let it go. And by letting things go, it creates something new. So if you're interested in writing a wordless poem, you can either take a screenshot or a photo of that if you feel called to write a wordless poem and you can create something different. You could create something the same as I've done with the fabrics or it could be with paper, it could be with clay, it could be with food, it could be in sand, anything that you feel called to do. And maybe when if anybody's interested, Anne, maybe what I'll do is I'll I'll copy that and send it um, as words so that you can include it in the recording document if anybody's interested in making it. I, I think people would be. I think that's a wonderful idea, Maria. Um, a couple of people have put in the chat that um, Molly said that's very special and Helen has said I love the idea of a wordless poem. So I think you've got a few interested people who'd like to thank you Anne because I will some people have asked me a question about you know I've never heard of this what would it you know I'm not I'm not very not very literal you know literary based and I'm like I literally made it up it's because for me I need to see things more creatively rather than for me I would write that down and it goes to my journal and I don't see it whereas my wordless poem I'll see every day and I'll keep that up for the whole of this season and then I, I've got my winter one is already ready and then I'll put my spring one up and then I'll have to make a lovely yellow one for the for the summer. So I'm going to share some more things that I've done that may inspire you to go away and do something with some autumnal crafts. So um, a couple of years ago, I I'm a big fan of collecting leaves. I've got books all over the place that when I open it, I'm pressing leaves. I don't have a proper presser, but I've got books with leaves inside. And I had this leaf and what I thought, I thought well, I'd like to do something with it, but I don't know what. So I took some paper and I put the leaf on as a stencil and I just padded on top of it, the orange. And then I kept it on top and then I went over in gold. And then I just, put little dots because I knew I was going to sew it. I put little dots. So when I was going to thread the thread through it, it would be easier. And I just created um, a picture, something different that, that I have that reminds me of autumn. And of course, I didn't want to throw that leaf away. So that was the leaf that I used as a stencil. And I made a picture of it. It's really tricky to sew a leaf onto some paper, but it was a really mindful activity. I didn't really have time to think about anything else apart from what was where my thread was going in next. So that might be something that you want to do for yourself or with your students. Another thing that I'm doing at the moment is drying my tea bags. So I have some tea bags that I, and I'll show you when, when I finish sharing the screen, so I've got one in my hands now, they make little pockets of wonder. So I found this really delicate leaf. It was so gorgeous. I didn't know what to do with it. And I thought, well, I'll just put it in a little, little pocket frame. And so at the moment in my kitchen, I don't, I don't even have to say anything to my family. They know that if there's something, <laughs> there's 20 tea bags drying downstairs, they know that there's going to be some creative activity from them. So and they're very easy to empty, you just cut the top off. Um, the circular ones are a bit trickier. I haven't worked out quite what to do with them yet, but um, but they are they are particularly lovely. And I've put them in, I've stuck things on top of them and I've stuck some inside them. And it's just something else that you can reuse and, and perhaps give it gifts. I mean, this is a, a nice activity to do with your students or, or even for yourself. So who would have thought reusable tea bags? <laughs> This is another activity that I did. It was it was not an easy task. And I'm surprised that this leaf has this leaf bowl has lasted two years. It's from my wisteria tree outside. 
and the, the leaves are starting to fall and they, they change a beautiful color. And I put some cling film on top of a bowl and I pasted every night uh, a layer of leaves until um, it was all dry. It was very messy. It was brilliant, but now it's got all my little conkers and acorns and yeah, it's lasted a couple of years and uh, many years, hopefully may it last. So that might be something that, that you'd like to do. Um, also, I painted some leaves before and just attached them onto sticks and twigs with thread. I mean, very, very simple. I've used um, acrylic paint, acrylic white paint to paint on the leaves and just to do some some dotty patterns, really. Something that's that's quite, I've got it over as you, as you walk into my little workshop office and every time I walk through the leaves blow and it's it's just a nice, a different activity. So that might be something that you might want to do. And, and anything that I've shown you here, you might want to do something different. It might inspire you, might catalyst a, a different creative part of yourself. This is another thing that I do. I, I do these all the time. I'm working on one at the moment, but these are my circles of hope. I started making them in lockdown in 2020, two years ago. So I started making some spring ones. Then I made some seaside ones with different fabrics and wool. And then I am making at the moment this year, I'm making um, the earth festival season. So this one is the autumn equinox. I'm working on at the moment, the Sarwain one, which is uh, around Halloween time. So I'm going to be doing that all the way through the year. I've made chakra ones. I've made rainbow ones for pride. And these ones are particularly beautiful because this hoop I use, um, I harvest lovingly and mindfully and thankfully from my magnolia tree out in the front garden. It's quite a big tree. So in the autumn, uh, in the August time, they grow up the branches. So I cut them and I've got some... Um, really heavy pieces of granite in our sitting room. And so I place them under there. They take about two weeks to set. And then I turn them over again. So these take quite a long time to set, but they're so simple. They're so simple to use, just a branch. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure you could use any branches that while they're still flexible and, um, and create something. And I know that this year with partnership with the Steve Sinnott Foundation, I've been making these to support my own work that I do in schools, but also to support the work of the Steve Sinnott Foundation. So from today until Friday, if you're interested in purchasing one of these, and if you use the code SSF2022, you will get 20% off and the money you raise the money will be given to the Steve Sinnott Foundation. So I've also put a QR code on there because if you, I managed to do this the other day, I'm very excited. If you, with your mobile device, if you click onto that, it will take you straight to the website. Um, but what I'll do, Anne, is I'll share that with you to go out in the email. If anybody, I may, you may be using your mobile device to watch this presentation. So that might not be easier, but if you're watching this on the desktop, then and you've got another device that you can scan that. So I hope that today you've given yourself a little bit of time to recognize and harvest your own wonderful achievements, started to think about the things that you could let go of. There are my details. And thank you very much for journeying with me for World Teachers Day.